Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. What's up, everybody? I'm Asa Green River, and I'm going to be your host for this episode of Side Quest. Now, if you haven't heard of me before we get into one of the best games ever made, I am uh, the <laughs> the founder, host, producer, personality, whatever, uh, from Borderline Entertainment. Uh, we create podcasts such as Game Chat and Party Chat, uh, and then we also have live streams on twitch.tv slash borderline entertainment, and then various other content on youtube.com slash borderline entertainment. Um, you can check me out there. Um, I also work with the game's hotline, takethis.org, and the, uh, the indie game studio Waking Oni Games. But enough about that. That's not why you're tuning into this episode. You're tuning in to hear me talk about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the video game that nobody thought that anybody would want to talk about, but I'm here to tell you all about it. Now, it's not because Ghost Recon revolutionized video games. It's not because they brought the Tom Clancy series back from the brink of destruction. No. It's because they're doing a lot of really good things and Ubisoft continues to make it better. Now, when Ghost Recon Breakpoint came out a handful of years ago, it did not do well. There were a lot of things wrong with it. It needed a lot of work. That cannot be understated. But since then, just like what they did with Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft kept digging in. They didn't give up on the game. But the thing is, is that not a lot of people know about it. And that's why I want to talk to you about it. Now, I'm a huge Tom Clancy fan. I love pretty much all of the series, including End War, um, including Hawks, um, the upcoming X Defiant. It could be in there too. Um, so there really isn't a Tom Clancy game that I'm not going to at least give a solid go. Um, and this was one of those that at first it didn't quite hit for me. And it's because a lot of the staples from the Ghost Recon series just weren't there. You know, the in-depth squad commands, um, the really grueling difficulty. Um, that's one thing that I really liked about the old Ghost Recons is that they had uh, a lot of challenging missions. You didn't feel like anything was too easy. You really had to rely on not just your quick trigger finger, but you had to rely on your quick mind and the ability to change the flow of the battlefield. And ever since Wildlands, it just kind of felt like this Tom Clancy skin over a GTA clone. Um, but they since rolled some of that back, so they've added a lot of new updates that allow you to increase the difficulty of the game. Of course, you can put in like a realistic mode and things like that, um, but you can now add more realistic shaders. So when it's nighttime, it's really night. Um, when it's daytime, it's really bright. So those the sun rays are brighter, those uh, dark shadows are darker, so you get more realistic lighting. So you have to really use, you know, like your night vision and your thermal vision, things that you honestly could live without. Um, before things that do distort your vision a little bit, but now you really have to um, if you want to be successful in a mission. A lot of other smaller nuanced things that they added to are uh, squad commands. So you do have your AI companions. Um, when the game first came out, it really was this, you're a lone wolf, hardened uh, warrior, whatever, you know, army person, and you're stranded on this island by yourself to, to fight off um, Shane from The Walking Dead. But now, while that's like story beats, it's still kind of there. You're allowed to have three squad mates with you, whether you customize them yourself, which is super dope, or if you do co-op, which sidebar is another thing that can't be understated. The co-op in this game is fantastic. And if you have one person who buys the game, three other people can just download the trial and play with you through the entirety of the game for free. They're really encouraging people to give this game a try. Now, getting back to some of the changes that they've made to the game to really make it um, a lot more fun, a lot more true to the Ghost Recon name. Um, so you know, they added the ability to, this is going to sound really nonchalant, like things that you would think would just already be in it, but they added the ability to distract enemies. They added the ability to like throw something around the corner just to get their attention to move them. So encouraging more stealthy approaches to your missions. Um, they also added... Uh, more classes and more depth to those classes. Um, so if you were to take on, for example, the sharpshooter class, uh, the way that you get a lot of those perks is uh, through experience and through actually working through that class instead of getting the arbitrary uh, systems that they had in place before. Uh, which brings me to my next point is you don't have to play it the way that it 
it was initially built. So when the game first came out, they had this weird pseudo RPG system that is still there if you want to use it. But if you go the realistic route, you get rid of all of that. So you don't have tiered weapons. Uh, you don't have like the classic greens and blues and purples and oranges and, and fighting to level up your guns. No, you can get to that classic. You just pick up a gun and you use it. Everything has base stats. Uh, you can f you still find the attachments throughout the world, still find blueprints to upgrade your guns with, you know, maybe a better trigger, a better scope. But if you pick up an M4, if you pick up an M10 or whatever, you pick up a different gun, that's what it's always going to be no matter where you are in the game, which is such a breath of fresh air when it comes to wanting that true Ghost Recon feel. Now, enough about the, the base game. The base game obviously is tons of fun. You're sold. I can tell. I can hear it perking up in your ears just by listening to it as a, a hardcore Tom Clancy fan. You're ready to pick up this game today. But let me further sell it to you as to why it's one of my favorite games. Now, before I get to like the golden bits that I'm just like itching to talk about, I need to talk about accessibility. Oh my gosh. The, the things that they are doing with accessibility within this game are huge. Um, not just in the way that, you know, the... Uh, if, if you're playing, um, for example, um, there's a colorblind mode, so you, that's something that you can utilize um, if that's something that you were to need. But, you know, let's say that you wanted the full Ghost Recon experience. You, you wanted to play unrealistic, but some of that difficulty is a little bit too much. Um, some of the patrols are a little bit too intrusive. Um, maybe some of the map markers are a little bit harder to see. Or let's say, you know, in the regular mode, you liked the fact that you had a mini map and that things would uh, pop up with little icons within the actual... Um, in your actual field of view when you're playing, but you wanted the pick up any gun, you wanted the harder difficulty. They have sliders, they have mixing and matching of different uh, of things that you can, uh, different amplifiers and modifiers to the game that you can turn on or turn off that truly make it your experience. Um, so nobody's game is going to be exactly the same, but you're also, you're, you're always going to have um, an amazing experience with it. So the accessibility factors are amazing i really suggest that when you do finally pick this up and it goes for sale all the time check that out make it make it how you want it now okay ghost recon great accessibility fantastic little did you know that ghost recon is the best terminator game that there's ever been it is the best splinter cell game that we've gotten probably since conviction I'm not going to throw too much shade to Blacklist. Blacklist was a great game, and this conversation is not about that, even though I could. I want to talk about the DLC that has come to this game. So as I told you before, you, you can change the way that the world plays. You can change the amount of patrols that go around. You can change the amount of UAVs that try to spot you and so on and so forth. You can go back and play these DLC, whether you want to just experience it or you want to see the way it changes the world. And after you play through it, you can alter the world to fit within that. So let's talk about Terminator for a minute. I'm a massive Terminator fan, um, love the movies, and love the video games. But there hasn't really been, aside from Resistance, there hasn't been like a strong Terminator game. The DLC content for Terminator within Ghost Recon Breakpoint is miraculous. It has the music. It has the correct sounds for the weapons. And the way that you can alter the world of Aurora, which is the main island in the game, the way that you can alter it, you can make it. So T-800s pop up out of nowhere, and it is a feat. It is a feat to, to defeat those. You can make it so that the, the different drones that drive around and fly around are branded with, with Skynet. You can make it so... Whenever you play the game, you've got the Terminator soundtrack. You don't just have to be playing the missions. You can have that music playing throughout the world. It's incredible. And then if you wanted to, you could just go back and keep replaying that little bit of DLC story that ends with a raid battle that would rival Crota from Destiny. It's phenomenal. Now talking about Splinters, and I'm not going to talk about every single one of the DLCs like in, in, in length, so because I want you to be surprised by a lot of it, um, but I want to jump into the Splinter Cell DLC. Michael Ironside, the original voice of Sam Fisher, is back. And of course, you know, there's the big meme going around where, you know what, Sam Fisher is in everybody's game except his own. And that still holds true. 
but this DLC Deep Blue is one of the best things we've gotten. So similar to Terminator, you get Splinter Cell music injected into the game. And not just any Splinter Cell music, You a lot of the music that you hear comes from Chaos Theory, the best Splinter Cell game. They knew exactly what they were doing, Ubisoft Montreal. You knew. You knew what you were doing. So you have the music. You have Michael Ironside coming back. You have missions geared around stealth, some that you can't even start. You can't even kick them off until it's a certain time of night. Sam won't even come out to meet you. And you get bonus multipliers and things like that if you approach it the stealth way that he suggests that you do. You've got the new Echelon class that brings in Sam's unique goggles. You've got the ability to pull on some of Sam's weapons. You can get his 5.7 pistol. You can get his SC-20K. Um, you can get his signature goggles. And if you remember, I, I talked a little bit about how you have your squad mates. So... You can customize your squad mates, but after you complete a DLC, you get a specific costume that you can then paste onto your squad mates. So if you were to ask me right now, Asa, your, your, your squad, your, your AI teammates, who do you have with you? Well, my sniper um, is now uh, a Splinter Cell agent from 3rd Echelon. Uh, my heavy gunner is a T-800. And then my SMG support person is Ash from Rainbow Six Siege. Um, which Rainbow Six has another great one that alters the world um, to have this gas that's everywhere in these different pockets and you have to to refill your gas mask. There's just there's so much that this game puts out there that people, again, just have no idea at how much it's changed and how much it's evolved. And the thing is, is they are still updating the game to this day. It's not like, all right, you can go in now and you're going to get the complete package um, and everything that's there, that's what it is. No, there are still things to look forward to. Um, the most recent uh, drop in DLC content was a callback to old Ghost Recon games by bringing in Captain Mitchell. So there's a deep cut for all of you, you Math Blasters out there that are Ghost Recon fans. Captain Mitchell's back um, with a, a great DLC mission. And again, there's more to come. So I highly encourage you, after listening to me rant and rave about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, that you A, give it a try, B, when you give it a try, buy it on Xbox so you and I can play together, um, and then C, please tag me on Twitter at AGreenRiver07. Um, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Um, you can try to tell me that I'm wrong, but I guarantee you that that's just not going to work because trust me on this, it's a fantastic game, and we probably aren't going to get another Splinter Cell. So if you're looking for Splinter Cell action, this is where it's going to be. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can find me on Twitter at AGreenRiver07. Um, you can also search Borderline Entertainment on all of your social media platforms. Connect with us there. Um, watch our content over on twitch.tv slash Borderline Entertainment, youtube.com slash Borderline Entertainment. And uh, please connect with also TakeThis.org, which is a mental health organization within games. Um, and then also the Games Hotline, which is an emotional support hotline for the gaming industry. Um, and then, of course, uh, like I said, I also work with Waking Oni Games. Um, and we currently have a game that's on Steam that you can wish list, uh, which is Onsen Master, uh, which is a, a wonderful blend between Spirited Away and uh, Overcooked. So with all of that said, thank you so much for letting me take up a little bit of your time. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon about your wonderful opinions of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Happy gaming. This is Weber Lask. Hi, this is Victor Vaughn, and I run the Weberless Podcast Network. I am currently in my fifth season of the Weberless Podcast, which began oh so many episodes ago, and I've been so delighted and intrigued to learn about our colleagues and our friends in the industry, to find out where we began, where we're going, what we've done, and especially in the last year, what we haven't done. So if you enjoy being a wallflower in the dressing room and hearing all about what we do, why we do it, and what's left to do. Please go to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google, Libsyn, and probably some other ones I don't even know about. Oh, we're on Audible now. How neat is that? We're on frickin' Audible. Oh, so go to your platform of choice, hit subscribe when you find We Burlesque. That's W-E-B-U-R-E-L, wait, W-E-B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E. I should know how to spell it by now. So, or you can go to weberlesspodcast.com. That's all one word. That's W-E-B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T.com. Yeah, that should do it. Or on Instagram, at W-E-B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E. That's it. 
Hi. So, anyway, be well, be safe, and let's talk. CPOV. CertainPOV.com.